Some examples when you might need to establish measurement invariance includes testing differences in a construct between ethnic groups or between gender. For example, you may want to see whether women have higher levels of depression than men. Or perhaps you're interested in whether parents in collectivistic cultures, such as China, are more emotionally warm than parents in individualistic cultures, such as the United States. But unless you demonstrate that the instrument you use to measure depression or emotional warmth operates equivalently across the groups you are comparing, any comparison is unwarranted and we will see later why. Other examples when you may want to test for measurement invariance includes developmental research. Why? Because the meaning of the construct can change over time or even for pre- and post-test after an intervention. For example, comparing post-traumatic post stress in soldiers before and after participating in traumatic events may not be justified because the experience itself changes the construct so the pre- and post-measure are no longer comparable. You may wonder why is it important to establish measurement invariance. Well, consider the following example. If a researcher is interested in comparing levels of depression between males and females, they may administer a questionnaire designed to measure depression. However, if the questionnaire has items that give unfair advantage to members of one group, of a members of another, it is likely to lead to measurement non-equivalence. In the depression example, such questions may refer to crying, leading women with equally strong depression as men to endorse such items to a higher extent. But will this mean that women are more depressed than men? Well, if measurement invariance testing shows that the instrument operates equivalently, then yes, we may conclude that. But if measurement invariance testing shows that the instrument is biased or non-equivalent, then we cannot claim that. Another frequently overlooked application is in experimental research. It is common to assess the effectiveness of intervention by comparing pre-test and post-test scores. However, the intervention may change the meaning of the construct. If the measure at the pre-test and post-test is non-invariant, then we cannot meaningfully compare the pre-test and post-test scores because with the intervention the construct has changed. However, if we don't check for invariance first, we may come to the wrong conclusion about the effectiveness of the intervention. To summarize, when you conduct measurement invariance, the question you ask is, is this instrument operating equivalently across these two or more groups? Or is the instrument operating equivalently at time one and at time two? So, with measurement invariance testing, you can assess whether the construct of interest is psychometrically equivalent across groups, but also across time. If the measurement is non-invariant, it means that the construct has different meaning to different groups. If we want to meaningfully compare a construct between groups, we must first establish that the construct means the same thing in both groups, or in other words, that the instrument operates equivalently across the groups. Otherwise, any mean differences you observe may be due to instrument bias.